Hello traders, it's ETM Effects, and in this lesson we're going to cover liquidity in, liquidity out, entry confirmation. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and definitely follow us on IG. Entry confirmations are clues we collect prior and post price reacting to the point of interest. So it's basically price approachment, price reaction, and what happened in between. These are all clues we collect to determine that if this point of interest is valid or not. To collect those clues, we pair higher time frame point of interest with lower time frame confirmations. We use the volatility presented to us rather than expecting volatility from an area we expect the reaction from. So instead of just entering a trade, you're looking at a situation from, you're waiting for price to prove itself. You're waiting to see injected volatility pushing price to your specific direction and certain other clues to then later on enter the trade. For a lot of traders, especially beginners, they feel a lot safer. And the benefits of this, you can shrink your stop loss and improve your win rate. So what is our liquidity in, liquidity out confirmation method? So let's say you have your higher time frame point of interest right here. This is your higher time frame point of interest. So remember, this is your higher time frame. And here we're going to demonstrate the lower time frame. So this would be the lower time frame. So as price approaches this level, we want price to go inside the zone, come back out, come back in, and come back down. This would be our confirmation. And this is not our um, MRW pattern or uh, a rejection in the form of a stop hunt or anything like that. What we're focused on right here is this level right here. We're focused on this area right here. Because when this area breaks, if this area breaks, this will officially confirm that the cells in this area, the cell orders in this area, officially overpowered the buys in this area that were previously generated through this entire move. So the fact that the cells overpowered the buys, what does this indicate? That means this higher time frame point of interest is valid. Let's go in a deeper example. So what is the why behind this confirmation? So let's say you have three dollar signs in this cell zone, right? In our higher time frame point of interest. Let's say this is a cell candle and we have three dollar signs. These are going to represent money or whatnot. I just don't want to put a specific number because what I noticed as I explain when I put specific numbers on it, it confuses people. So let's say there's three dollar signs here for them. Once price approached this area and reacted, let's say one dollar sign was used to for this price move to push price down. What happened? Price found uh, found rejection. Where did it find rejection? It found rejection somewhere here. That means there was a inefficiency or something like that that forced price to come up. It could have been various of things, right? So let's say price was pushed right here using. A dollar sign right here that came from this inefficiency so as price risen up there's still two sell orders here right there's two huge sell orders here and price was used right here we don't know if both of them were used or if one of them were used but what we know is when price took off there there is a lot of buys that were inserted here to push price forward so we can say that if price comes down here from from using these sell orders, from using this sell order, if price comes down here and there's more sell orders than the buy orders right here, price would continue down. But if there's more buy orders than sell orders, price would use this area to continue above. Get it? So basically, this is a two-way street and this is what we mainly use for our uh, continuation entry. We use this specific method. We, we wait for price to uh, react from a sell level, come back down, create a bullish order block, push back up in price. And if it comes down, that means this area got weaker. Why would this area get weaker? Because the amount of cells it had to endure, it had to use a little bit of cells to push price down and it had to use cells to push price down again. So if it uses this level right here and go up, there's no more sell orders. But how we use, how we flip this and use it as a confirmation, if it breaks 
this level right here. That means there's not enough buy orders. That means there's not enough buy orders to push price forward. What does that mean? That means the sell orders here overpowered. What does that mean when sell orders overpower in a higher time frame point of interest? That means it's validated. That means this is a confirmation. So what do you do? Once price breaks that area, you can get in a position and put your stop loss right above the last point and have your exit wherever the next rejection point, wherever there's liquidity, etc., etc. And And what is the benefit of the confirmation? Obviously, it shrinks your stop loss. Let's say this is your entire uh, high time frame a point of interest your stop loss would be all the way right here why would it be right here because let's say this was a uh, a gap or this was a order block you would put it right above it but with a confirmation you can shrink your stop loss and you can get a higher win rate because price already proved itself in this whole scenario so here we have more examples what happens? Price goes into our higher time frame point of interest, comes back down, creates the scale. This here would be the scale, comes back into the range. And the reaction from this area breaks our scale, insinuating what? That the sells are stronger than the buys. And as you can see, this area right here, this is, we're on the one hour time frame. But in this instance, this is a four hour order block. This is a four hour order block which would be our higher time frame point of interest. And the price action that we're looking at is the one hour. So price came into the area, came back down, formed the scale, came back up, used, used the sell orders left over in here to push price down. And once price breaks, this will be your confirmation. Again, price came down into the point of interest, came back up, formed the scale, came back inside, grabbed the rest of the orders and continued above. And this is what you can see here. Price came down, came came back up, used the point of interest again, and this where your entry would be, as you can see. Even though price took its time breaking this area, it's still a confirmation. And a lot of times this is what would happen. It would consolidate or try and waste a little bit of time as it's in the your entry area. And sometimes it will happen fast. It just depends. These are two different variations. Sometimes it just rips right away. And other times it will stay in the area before fully reacting to the area. So in this example, we have a higher time frame point of interest, which would be our higher time frame order block. And this higher time frame order block is conceived from a double liquidity purge, which later on caused a huge reaction that broke major structure which was our previous peak. So all the all the confirm, other confirmations are all in our favor. So all we're waiting for is our lower time frame confirmation entering this trade. Instead of just waiting for price to touch this area to try and get on the sell, we would wait for our liquidity and liquidity out confirmation. So let's go to the lower time frames. So what are we waiting for? What we're waiting for is our liquidity in, liquidity out. So that would be price coming in here, getting inside the zone, coming back down, then coming back in, confirming that this was our scale, and using these orders that are still left after the initial contact to break this level down. And our entry would be right here. And as far as exits, as far as exits, we can exit somewhere around this level right here forcing the supply turn demand zone or we could enter at this level right here this drop base drop which can later on stretch out to here but in my opinion we can even target a lower level than this just because higher time frame point of interest have higher time frame power behind them they have strong institutional power behind them they're not just like a, a lower time frame point of interest they have more power behind them just because they're conceived from a higher time frame so you could risk less and and uh, have a better reward so let's proceed a 
okay so price made contact with our higher time frame point of interest so what are we waiting for we're waiting for price to come back inside of our point of interest again to confirm that this right here is our um, scale okay price went back inside our uh, point of interest and it doesn't matter if we went deep inside or if it just touched the area the fact that it had contact with the point of interest is enough so this is our this is our scale so once price drops below this level we can get in a sell once price gets below this level we can get in a sell Okay, so now we can get in the cell and where's our stop loss is the highest point of our liquidity and liquidity out confirmation. So right here. And where would our take profit be? Again, you would want to target either this level right here, which would be the supply turn demand, or you could target the base right here. Preferably the base just because knowingly that you're having higher time frame power behind your move you're more than likely to reach for a further level. So this is a a little bit over three and a half to one. And it hit our target. So this is our time frame breakdown. So if your higher time frame point of interest is the weekly, your lower time frame confirmations are the daily and 12 hour time frame. If your higher higher time frame point of interest is daily, then your confirmations would be eight hour and the four hour. If the four hour is your point of interest then your lower time frame confirmation would be the one hour and 30 minutes and if the one hour is your point of interest then the one minute and the five minute would be your confirmation and i mean one thing one thing that i really wanted to cover and i just think it's going to take too long explaining but i'll try and like keep it as simple as i can when you think of time and time and volume right volume is more of like dynamic in nature and time is more periodic so it's not always what it is so not just because you can't say the higher time frame is going to be this that means the lower time frame is going to be this because one is dynamic and the other is more periodic right but this is a great blueprint to kind of follow and then later on you can start gauging volume and looking at your average daily and seeing um seeing like okay if the daily moves let's say 100 points a day but then you look at your four hour and your four hour moves 30 points would that be a good confirmation for you just using common sense probably not because you'd want to catch the move earlier on so as you develop as a trader you'll be able to understand the concept of volume equals time and and uh not even use this table anymore but as a beginner this would be a great way for you to enter the scene and start getting understanding of time frames and how to use them uh as far as like how they correlate with each other but yeah guys make sure you like share and subscribe make sure you guys follow on instagram there's a lot of fake accounts and i want to make sure that people are following the correct account so it's at escape the matrix fx there's no underscores no extra letters nothing like that so make sure you follow and comment on my last post that you came from the youtube channel and I'll follow you guys back. Peace.